So this transformation, the one you're about to see, has caused us equal parts stress and joy, and a lot of both. Like so much stress, so much joy. Today, you're gonna see how we transformed it from this, to this, to this. Just real quick, this backyard, this transformation, it was not cheap, it wasn't easy, it wasn't fast, and it required so many talented people, like really, really good hands on this project. And we, the Hendersons, are very, very thankful. And it's done. Let's back up a little bit, a little, little autobiography here. Uh, we lived in LA, we were, we've always wanted to move back to Oregon, but it took this particular property to get us to come home. So I wanted to live in the country, Brian wanted to live in the suburbs, like not like suburb suburbs, but he wanted us to have neighbors. He wanted a community school and that's hard to find. So when we found this property, it's you know two and a half acres in the middle of Southwest Portland, we were like, oh, oh wow, this is it. This property also has so many projects, like project upon project upon project, and as a design content creator, that is a very good thing. When we found the property, we actually loved how rural and rustic it was. It felt very Oregon to me. Um, it wasn't manicured, it wasn't like, prop, you know, like professional landscape, but it was nice. As we started, you know, doing the construction on the house, which was extensive, all of the equipment, all of the demo, all of that destroyed the landscaping. Again, it wasn't like in really good shape. It wasn't like something where I was just like, don't touch those roses. It was just like, and now it just became mud and dirt. It was just mud everywhere. In the summer it was dirt, but in the winter months, just mud. At a certain point, Brian and I were like, we cannot DIY this thing. Like this is, it's gotten, it's just the scale of it is too huge. And so if you have an opportunity to start over like that, you should do it right. And that's what we did. They say in business, you have to like spend money to make money. And we really nailed the first part with this project. We had to bring in some real professionals. So we hired Studio Compo, Callie. She's wonderful and she's a, a landscape design firm and her vibe that we just got each other immediately. And she started coming up with a plan or like four plans, <laughs> she was so great, um, to help turn this backyard into the farmstead of our dreams. So then we hired Daniel from Northwest Natives to actually execute her plan, to be the, the contractor on this job. We were in, we felt very, very good hands um, for something of this scale and this scope of work. We just didn't, obviously didn't have the, the know-how, the, the desire, the tools, the it, it expertise, any of it to get it done. But with Studio Compo and with Northwest Native, we did. So we're really starting from scratch, square one, to make it look and feel the most Oregon appropriate, like just a natural farmstead. So Callie got to work on the plans. We were, I mean, everything she showed us, we were like, yes, 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 yes. Like just nailed it. So we didn't want anything highly manicured. We didn't want it to look like this, like, you know, Vegas backyard or, you know, too, too linear, too modern, but also too cartoony. And that's a, that's a, that is a challenge, right? So we really leaned into natural elements, to flagstone and to well, all the things you're about to see, to try desperately to turn it back into maybe what it formerly was. So we wanted it to be this farmstead, this like really natural farm looking backyard, right? At the same time, we have kids, we have neighbors, we do a lot of entertaining, so it really had to work for us. It had to be a very, very usable space. But a lot of things have to happen to get to the fun stuff, like a year of a lot of things, like irrigation and trenching and electrical and like all these things that, the, again, it's same with the house where you don't really get the payoff for a long time. So let me walk you through the year of what we really did. So I can't really talk, can't really talk about the backyard without talking about the porch that did not exist. So when we bought the house, it was just like, there was just a wall basically with two windows, tons of, tons of shrubs. And we immediately saw the potential of this indoor outdoor flow that we wanted. Arcaform did an excellent job of, of reimagining this. Like I would have never thought to do a big covered porch. I thought that we were gonna add a sunroom and and then just put a deck. I don't I don't I guess I don't really have that much imagination, but Argoform, they they showed us a bunch of renderings and we're like, yeah, 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 that works, that works. And then they showed us this one and we're like, oh, that makes sense. That turns this house really almost like this is how it should have always been. 
So we salvaged the vintage windows. We designed the sunroom with the vintage windows in mind to kind of connect the second floor to the first floor. We put in these huge scenic doors that are just gorgeous that connect the back backyard to the living room. And then of course we added this like really homey porch. I've never had a porch before. And it's just like this solid railing, this solid decking. It just feels like a real like grown up porch. Like you could, we have Adirondack chairs and you know rock on the weekends. It, it, it really did come together. It's huge actually, but um, we have our porch. So Brian and I like to divide up the workload based on like what we're the most passionate about. So that meant that Brian took the sports court and the alpacas. So let's start with the sports court. This sports court when we first found the house was the biggest sports court in the history of time. It was bigger than a tennis court by like 20 feet on every single side. It was huge. We loved the idea of the sports court and never having one before coming from California. We were just like, oh my gosh, the sense of space is crazy, you know? But once we got, you know, moved here, we were like, oh, this is in a really, really bad shape. There were so many cracks. There was like weeds growing through the cracks. It was, it was not sound. <laughs> it had very bad integrity. And so nobody would even resurface it. So Brian took this on. I had no idea what was happening. I think I was designing like 12 bathrooms or something. And um, he's like, yeah, so we're gonna get rid of half the sports court and then resurface the other half. And I was like, okay, fine. I mean, like literally, I was like, sure, whatever. So then I come and they essentially had to remove the entire thing because there was never any like rebar or any proper things underneath it. So essentially it was just like, the asphalt was just like this. And it was probably eight to 10 inches of asphalt. It was insane. So the demo was crazy. Luckily, we had to bring in a huge truck. I don't think we had any footage of this. I'm sorry to tell you, but we had to bring in this huge, like gravel maker, I'm sure that's not what it's called, and they would put in the, the, the demoed asphalt and turn it into gravel, which we eventually did use, thank goodness, for the hillside, because the hillside was so muddy that we needed gravel to get, the, anyway, the whole thing was just like, I was like, oh my God, okay, fine, I just kept writing checks, and I was just like, this is not where, I thought we were focusing everything, but it had to get done at a certain point, and it did. We did it properly with all the like rebar, and I don't know, I don't even know. All I know is we have this like still pretty big sports court, you guys. Like it's, she's big, but like half the size of what she used to be. But anyway, she's still really big. We don't know what's gonna happen next over there. Like I think that we wanna put some pickleball lines. We play pickleball a lot and we play basketball like a horse a lot. So those are the two like objectives of this sports court. So maybe by next summer we'll have some lines painted on it and we'll have it like all finished. For now, it's definitely usable and very playable. The newest and by far the most awkward addition to our backyard are our pet alpacas. They're really funny and they bring us a lot of joy. They're very low maintenance. We have Bert, we have Milo, we have Otis, the kids name them obviously, and they're great. We fell in love with Milo at the farm and we couldn't stop thinking about him. Like he was so affectionate, just, just loved our kids so much. And so we, after shopping for about a year and a half to find the right alpacas for us, we brought these guys home. And I was a little bit nervous, like on day one, I definitely had a pit in my stomach that night. I was like, did we make a mistake? Like, is this a novelty thing that we are going to just end up adding so much stress and re responsibility to me specifically, <laughs> you know? And it hasn't been, it's been, it's only been a month, but like they're, the kids go out there every morning and they, you know, pick up the poop and they feed them and they pet them and they, you know, make sure there's water. And, and which is one of the things, you know, why we did it, right? One of the goals was like to teach responsibility and to turn our children into responsible and um, compassionate citizens of this earth. And these alpacas are really gonna do it. We put in this tiny, wonderful pool. By tiny, I mean it's the size of a living room rug. It's seven by 13. It is a pool during the day. It can be a hot tub at night or a hot tub in the winter. So from our perspective, living in Portland where it rains a lot and it's chilly in the winter, it is usable year round. It's called a soak pool. That's S-O-A-K-E, soak. And uh, it is a professionally built 
pool, like it's tiled and everything off site, and then they ship it to you, you crane it in. It's not super plug and play. Like you have to have a contractor that is electrical and plumbing and mechanical and all that kind of stuff. Like it's, it's still a thing, but it can be way more efficient and more affordable and a lot faster than a huge site specific pool. Our kids are obsessed with it. We get in a lot. We have hot tub parties with our grownups. It has turned out to be this thing that we thought would be like a, like a fun addition that we would use to something that we use every single day and that is just wildly popular and adding so much value to our life in our backyard. With the pool, we still wanted it to look like a farm, right? So we didn't want it to scream like, I'm a pool. So we put a split rail fence around it, a bunch of wildflowers, a bunch of tumbled stone, and it really does look natural. It almost looks more like a courtyard with a fountain in the middle, you know? I mean, it is a pool, but it has more of that vibe where people can gather around it. And it just, it does look way more appropriate for the farm settings than I think most pools would. Once we added the umbrellas, I will say it did give it way more of a resort vibe, which I hadn't predicted I would like so much, but they just like sway in the wind and they just like, they just, they scream like, hey, come over here and, and feel like you're on vacation. It's just wonderful. We do technically have a pool house and a garden. Those are not done, y'all. I mean, they, I tried to make them as good for camera as we could, but they will be done next year. The pool house basically houses the mechanical to the pool behind it, and it might be a gym, it might be storage, I'm not sure. And then we did build these above ground gardens that are really cute, but I didn't end up planting until late July. So I think I'm gonna get a fall harvest, let's see. But by next year, I, I, I think that those two areas will be more dialed in. The vision of the whole backyard, the whole property really, you know, was this more kind of natural farmscape, but like for kids. And it was a pool. But we wanted it to, we wanted all the transition spaces, all the flowers and all the pathways to be as appropriate as possible for this look. So Northwest Native and Callie from Studio Compo, we all decided that all the pathways should be this tumbled bluestone. Essentially what we wanted is these stones kind of set in place and then we wanted all of the flowers and the greenery and the ground cover to kind of mix and meld together. But we really just want it to, to, to look like it all flowed together and organic and kind of like it's always been here, but with a really sophisticated, cool color palette. What Callie did with the plant palette, it's so pretty. There's all these really, like they're not wildflowers because they have more structure than that. I think that they technically aren't wildflowers, but there's just a lot of these plants that are very native to Oregon in these pinks and really dark, pur purple's not even the right word, but you know, like really deep auberge aubergine tones. There's different greens. There's, the, it just feels very appropriate to Oregon. It doesn't look like overly curated, but as a designer, I can look at it and be like, oh, that's very pretty. Like that doesn't just happen, but, and yet it looks really natural. So in, in my fantasy life, every single day we have the opportunity with our kids to swim in the pool, hang in the hot tub, play basketball on the sports court, play a ball on the sports court, hang out with the alpacas, um, hang with the dogs in the yard. It's just, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to do and I just feel extremely thankful and grateful for you know the fact that this is where our kids get to grow up and this is where we can enjoy um, this time with them. Everything is on the blog, guys, and it is, uh, there's really pretty photos, there's a lot of resources, so there's all the, the links to things, there's more deep dives into how we actually executed it. So head over there if you wanna look at all of that. If you're interested in these more long form videos, go ahead and do that thing where you like and subscribe, because it does mean a lot to us and it, um, it keeps us being able to produce them. So thank you very much for watching. Bye everybody.